Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode three, two, five of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. Sucked in, guys. I may have gotten the number wrong last week, but we're, it's, a, it's a whole new week and we know how to count here. Or at least uh, I, I do sometimes. Other times I forget, but whatever. We're here. It's a brand new Sunday. Keelan's here. Woohoo. Another year older. Another year further away from being in touch with Gen Z. Well, that's what I was going to say. So what's the point of you? Of you didn't you, wish me a happy birthday. Happy birthday, mate. You didn't say, you didn't message me or anything. Though. I said happy birthday for tomorrow, the day before, yeah, didn't I? but that doesn't count. No, that doesn't count, and I'm very sorry. <laughs> I was having a horrible grief week. Yeah. <laughs> you know, grief is uh, gr- grief is funny. You know, where, sorry, sorry, you know what you did do on my birthday? What did I do? You sent me a bunch of TikToks yeah. over text of yeah. just like... Were they good? I, I can't remember, probably. Yeah. But instead of saying happy birthday, like we're yeah. having a conversation, instead of saying happy birthday, you just sent me TikToks. Yeah. Well, look, happy birthday. Thank you. And 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 keep an eye on the skies for a birthday present. That's all I'll say. Okay. Yeah. So real? hundred percent real. But not <laughs> not real like the last time I promised you a birthday present and then forgot to give it to you for two years. Yep. Real as as in the sense that it will it will most likely arrive oh good yeah uh, okay yeah okay. so just stay tuned for that thanks anyway enough about you <laughs> well, that's my thing off yeah oh, that was it yeah i'm sorry i was having a horrible grief week and i forgot everything that's why i didn't upload i didn't post i didn't do anything grief is funny where like if you've never experienced like uh like grief especially like surprise grief like surprise <laughs> that's not it's not good um but what's funny about grief is uh, if you've never had someone really important pass away, you think that it's like you're going to be sad because they're, because they're not here anymore. It's actually more like you're, you're like you wake up one, one day and, then, and you're having a great day and then you look in the fridge and there's cheese and your brain goes, cheese, they love cheese. <laughs> and it's more like that. Where, yeah. where you think you're going to look at a photo of them, but it's actually just like, ah, uh, dog poo. She used to pick that up. <laughs> and then you start losing it. So, I've, yeah, that's what I've been I've been doing all week. So I'm sorry, but happy birthday. How old are you? 24. Old. Once you hit 25, old. Yeah, my brain will be fully developed in a year. Yeah, you know what? I reckon you, like you're in a great period now because you're actually going to start feeling that pineal gland start to solidify. And so, like, whatever opinions you have, fucking do your research because that's all you're gonna have. <laughs> like, you're in the you're in the final 365 days of being able to genuinely change your mind. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. it. Yeah, I know. I should probably um, expand my music taste as well. That's true because I can't I can't listen to any. I can listen to new music and I can even find a new artist and go, "This is good," and then I will never ever listen to them again. Like that Royal Otis cover that came out. Great. Love it. Never going to listen to it again. Checked out their album. Amazing. Really good. But, I'm, but I'll am but i never, ever listen to anything other than the one Coldplay album that I play on repeat and then all of Curse's albums and a bunch of Australian hip-hop. And that's it. And I'll be listening to that until I have dementia. The only way you're going to be able to get the light to turn on in my eyes again when I'm 95 and I've forgotten my name and the name of my kids and I punch on with a nurse is you'll just, you'll just, be, you'll just play... Don't, 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 don't fuck with Cursor. And then I'll come back to life and I'll remember who I am. But it's, but that's it. That's, so expand those tastes because, you know, I'm 30 years old now and I listen to, to, to Cursor, which I've been listening to since I was in year 12, 18 years old, and then, and then some Coldplay. <laughs> and, that's, and that's it. And a bit of Madonna. Because I used to like that because mum used to pump it all the time when I was ele- like 11. So that's the only n- new music that I've gotten into is, is a Madonna album from 2004. That's cool. It is, it is fucking good. I had tickets to see Royal Otis last night at the corner. Did you go? I forgot. That oh, I had the, tickets. the corner's in Frankston. The corner's in Richmond. Richmond. Okay. But there is one that's... There that's, is a corner in Frankston. Yeah. A corner of roads. Yeah. But there's none of those bars that on is called the corner. No. 
I swear there was. I don't drink. I don't know the name no, of bars. Nah. You forgot. Yeah, and then I got my Google Calendar alert mm. <laughs> when they were supposed to start. Fucking, I hate those Google Calendar alerts. They need to just make it default. Remind me four hours before. <laughs> yeah. Who the fuck gets a reminder? Oh, by the way, your event that's six hours away, it's in 20 minutes. Oh, <laughs> great. So now you've just reminded me to feel fucking horrible yeah, and eat- think about all the hours I work to spend that money and shoot it into the sun. Eating dinner, I went, fuck. Oh, yeah, just ruined your dinner. <laughs> like, why Why isn't Google Calendar smart enough to... I mean, it knows my location. It fucking listens to me when I poo. It knows everything about me. <laughs> why can't it be like, oh, well, Lewis is at home right now. I should probably tell him that the event that's 40 minutes away, I should tell him that, you know, he needs to leave in 20 minutes. I That happens all the time. You know, it's the worst when it's with gigs that you're booked and paid to be at. <laughs> That happened. That happened to me. You know, that was the fucking. That was the wor- worst one. It happened recently. It was, it was supposed to be my first gig back. I wanted to start slow, so I, I I hit up like a really small room that's more of an open mic. I wanted to kind of like dip my toes in. This is before Perth even. I'm like, oh, I've got my Perth shows coming up. I want to do like a like a five ten minute spot in front of like fifteen people to slowly dip my toes into it. I message this guy. He gets unbelievably excited. He puts my name and face on the poster. He starts telling everyone. Forgot about it. Google Calendar is like, hey, your uh, your headline spot starts in five minutes. I was like, oh, good. I guess instead of going to sleep, I'll feel like shit for 40 minutes. Message the guy an apology. In my defense, he was a little bit obscure about the time I was supposed to show up. So I was able to successfully blame it on him, but it was 100% my fault. (laughs) And it gets better, bumped into him at another gig. And I go, I'm so sorry, dude. But as we both know, it is your fault. And he said, I understand that. And I said, and don't you fucking forget it. And then he said, uh, and then I was like, did many people show up? And he goes, oh yeah, a bunch of fans of yours. Fuck! (laughs) So, Sorry. Bro. But look, at least there was a giant gap in the lineup and the show went shorter than expected. So <laughs> at least they got to go home a little bit earlier. I don't know. Well, I don't know what the silver lining is there. If, if uh, you know, I wasted your time, I'm sorry. But it's Google Calendar's fault. I will say that if I post about it, I'll definitely turn up. You know what made me super excited? Uh, I finally got to put back on sale that Gold Coast show that I cancelled. Remember, what was that, two years ago now? It was uh, October 2022. October 2022, I had a flight booked, accommodation, I had a show, and uh, I was too sick to get out of bed. I was that fucking exhausted. I had to cancel that show, and then and then I think I uh, responded reasonably to that by taking about eight months off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Did, uh, that was the last fucking straw. Never cancelled a show in my life. I haven't showed up to a few spots. That's a recurring behaviour. But never cancelled one of a, my own ticketed events before. Uh, but I finally got to put that on sale. And you know what? It feels good. Day one, half sold out. Those tickets were sold two years ago. But, you know, Gold Coast, you got to get your tickets. I wonder how many of those people are dead. Oh. Now, it's possible. Probably... I wonder how many of those people have gotten just completely sick of me. You know when you really like someone for about 18 months and then you're like, ah, unfollow. Yeah. (laughs) Now there's there's probably like, I I don't know, maybe three people that are like, oh, I would have been excited for that, but I don't really want to go. But you know what? I've got a brand new chin. So it's new chin, new me, baby. All right? It's all happening. You know, I get my braces off in April. It's coming up, like the start of April. So basically in about a month, they come off. And then I'm going to be in my final form and then it really is over for you. So if 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 you're not convinced, all right, it's fucking over for you. And we can't even hint at what has happened, but Keelan, you know what's happened. And something has happened for me that absolutely without a shadow of a doubt would not have happened... (laughs) If I looked the way that I did before, right? (laughs) When I told you this, you were like, what the fuck? So (laughs) let me just say, it's officially over. I have pretty privilege. 
and 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 the opportunities that come with that. Calvin Klein ad. Calvin Klein ad. That is true. I am wearing my Calvin Kleins. They're horrible. All right. I much prefer the other Australian brand that does not sponsor the show, though. So I will not mention. I have actually that un like the name that we won't speak of. Mm. I still have the same underwear that I was given five years ago. Yeah, and it all holds up. I yeah. still wear it every single day. But and I've put on a lot of weight since I was 19. So right. it's just like the ass is really stretched. <laughs> you know, I have to buy new jeans. My ass has gotten huge recently. I think it's the swimming. Does swimming make your ass big? Yeah. I mean, you you swim more than me. But yeah, it's the kicking. Yeah. So, look, all I'm saying is, guys, come see me live. New chin, bubble butt. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it's all happening. Um, right. I've had a good week. I uh, I got into an altercation on the train. Um, I I was uh, I I was presented with the opportunity to uh, what's it called? Bystander intervention is what it's called. Where some guy was uh, harassing this girl uh, on the train, and he looked really drunk. Right and. He got on the train, and this was after one of my gigs. It's like 11 p.m. on like a Saturday night. So I'm going home to Frankston. Get on. And I sit down, and this guy is like super, super drunk. And um, I don't know what it is. I feel like I fucking attract crazies. Like these fucking loons just look at me, and they're like, that's the guy I want to speak to. And that's unfortunate because I feel like I, feel like I have a very good don't fucking talk to me facial expression, which I have practiced with with hours and hours and hours spent in the backseat of an Uber. But this guy just sees me and you know when they fucking just, hey, brother, hey, brother, hey, brother. And I'm looking at the floor. Hey, brother, <laughs> hey, brother. And I'm looking at the floor. And he goes, hey, brother. And I look at him and I give him the stare like, I'm not fucking talking to you. Hey, brother. And I just... I. I don't know what it is. I don't have tolerance for this shit anymore. Normally, after that, I would probably talk to the guy or go, what? And then try and be like amicable. This time he goes, hey, brother, I just look him in the eyes. I stand up and I move to the back of the carriage, just walked away from him. And I thought, all right, that'll give him the message. It's a fairly busy carriage. Then he stands up and he is on the other end of the carriage and he, he starts like looming over this woman who's by herself. Like she's sitting down. There's an empty seat next to her. She's against the wall. And he's like looming, big guy, big scary guy, looming over her and starts like talking to her. And she's looking at the floor doing the same thing. Like clearly not interested. I see this. I'm on the other end of the train. I'm like, oh, fuck, this sucks. Hopefully someone will go and say something to him because there's a bunch of men much closer. No one fucking says anything. Everyone is looking and just watching it happen. And I see this and I'm like, I can't watch this shit happen. So I go up to the guy and I'm like, hey, man, she doesn't want to talk to you. All right, go down, go over there and sit by yourself. Like that's, I didn't yell at him. I was just like strong and confident and forceful. And I'm a huge person. So it's like my role. And it is, you know, if you're a dude and you see a guy doing that to a woman, you got to say something. All right, you you have to keep your distance. Don't get aggressive. Just be forceful and let him know that it's unacceptable behavior. She turns around and immediately, like, fear on her face. Thank you. He goes and turns around and then he sees, he looks at me and he sees that I'm, you know, like, confident. And he goes and he sits back down where he was sitting. And then I go back to all the way to the other end of the train and I sit back down myself. And, you know, it's fucking scary doing that. I'm a little bit like, uh and then a couple minutes go by, he stands up and he starts walking towards me. And I'm like, oh my God, here we fucking go. Am I going to have to fight this guy? What the fuck's going on? And he comes and he's like super drunk, or at least it appears that he's super drunk. He sits across from me, right? He basically <laughs> pushes like a little boy, like nine, 10 year old boy and a mother, pushes them out of the way and sits down and is like, hey, you, you shouldn't be judgmental of other people. And I just look at him and I go, dude, I'm not being judgmental. She didn't want to talk to you. All right. You wouldn't leave her alone. And I don't want to talk to you. And he goes, you shouldn't judge people. And, uh, and then he pulls his hand off and I'm about to fucking unload on this guy. He pulls his hand off and he goes, 
I just got out of the hospital and I'm like, oh my God, the guy's mentally disabled. <laughs> I'm like, oh no, is he giving me the, I just got out of the hospital. And I, and, and, uh, and another guy, he goes, cause the guy goes, you shouldn't be fucking judgmental. And another dude goes, Hey, don't swear in front of the kid. And then he pulls his hand off and shows off stitches on the back of his head. He goes, I just got it out of the hospital. And I'm thinking, oh my God, this guy's like mentally disabled or something. And he shows off his he goes, I got out of hospital halfway through the guy's, the other guy's sentence of going, sit by his, don't swear in front of the kid. So the guy goes, don't swear in front of the kid. Like both me and the other guy's like, oh no, he's not drunk. He's not on drugs. He's mentally disabled. And we've just fucking told him off. Cause he was sitting, I, upon reflection, he was sitting in the mentally disabled section. I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> have I just fucking staunched a retarded guy? <laughs> And he goes, oh, I just got out of the hospital. And I'm like, oh, my, oh I'm sorry. Are you, are you disabled? Like genuinely, I'm, so, I'm sorry, dude. Are you disabled? And he goes, what? No, I just fell over. And I went, well, then go and sit by yourself. I don't want to fucking talk to you. <laughs> and then he was like, oh. And he got the vibe that everyone else was like death staring him. And he went and sat by himself. But. Fuck, that was a little moment where I was like, oh my God, have I just staunched like a guy with a with a rare brain condition? I thought he was going to be like, you shouldn't be judgmental. I actually have Williamson syndrome or something. But but all good. He was actually just a drunken sexist menace scaring a woman. So lucky me. Um, <laughs> but you know, that's like... Uh, bystander intervention it's interesting like it you see the the bystander effect in real life this happened to you and me remember when we were in hobart we we're at the pool swimming and the fire alarm went off yeah. there's maybe a hundred people there really busy fire alarm goes off and me and keelan immediately get out of the pool and i just <laughs> scan the exits i find the nearest exit and i we just start to leave we didn't even grab our stuff because we're like Fire, earthquake, building falling down, gunman, whatever. We're getting out. <laughs> we were the only two. Everyone else in the whole pool just kind of scanned and looked at what everybody else was doing and then was like, well, no one else is scared, so I'm not. And it's like, that's how the building collapses and 80 people drown in the pool covered in roof, you know? And it, look, it was a false alarm, but like, it's, it's so interesting to see bystander effect happen and how, um, how like vulnerable you are to it as well. Because like when we were getting out and going to the exit, we got to the exit and then I noticed that nobody else was doing... Like, did you go to the exit because you heard the alarm or because I was? Because I'd heard the alarm. Yeah. we Because we both, yeah, got out at the same time. Yeah. yeah. And But no one else did. In fact, most people were just like, ah, eh, I'll keep doing laps. If I die, I die. Which is... Just so interesting to see. But I also noticed, like on the train, for example, when this dude's harassing this woman, everyone was watching it and even looking at each other and being like, oh, look at this guy scaring the shit out of this woman by herself. And then everyone was just like, this is a bad thing. And then no one did anything. So then when I did, uh, it like gave permission to everyone else. So like that other guy that yelled at the dude, for swearing in front of the kid, he did nothing when he was talking to the woman. He only yelled at the guy after I did. So it made it like socially acceptable to tell the dude to not harass women and scare children. It's really interesting when you, and you know, when I, before I went up to go say something to the guy, even I was like, oh, no one else is doing anything. Maybe I should just leave. But then you have to be like, nah, there's a fire alarm going out on. I need to leave the building or no, I'm not going to let this guy you know, fucking harass this woman. It's very interesting that that when you uh, when you do something in those situations, you see everyone else starts to do it as well. So uh, that's my little thing for the day. Is if you do, if you are in like a public area and there is someone doing something like that and no one's intervening, often all it takes is one person to go, "Hey, not cool." And then all of a sudden, everyone else is like, oh, yeah, we, we actually don't like that. And they will back you, as scary as it can feel. Um, so, yeah. Thank God he was 
actually a horrible person and not mentally disabled. <laughs> Could you fucking imagine? Um, actually, I have Down syndrome. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Sorry, dude. He's probably just asking the girl for lollipops or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Um, all right. So I wanted to talk, I talk about, um, you saw Taylor Swift. Yep. You saw Taylor Swift's biggest ever show in her career uh, at in Melbourne, which really surprised me. Yep, 96,000 people. 96,000 people for a musician is, or for any one person doing anything is crazy. I think only like Ed Sheeran has done those numbers here. Eminem? Probably. He did the MCG as well, so probably. Yeah. Yeah, There's there's got to be a, man... There's got to be a very, very small list. And I think that's the biggest show that's ever been done there. So Taylor's at the top. Yeah. That's fucking insane. And and also she did it three times. So she yeah. actually did 300,000 people. And I think the population of Melbourne is only a few million. So she kind of performed to like 2%, 2 or 3% of the entire population of a city. Ooh. It's fucking crazy. Obviously a lot of people traveled in, but you know what I mean. Like, it's just so cr- like you were telling me that for the whole weekend she was here, you could not get reservations at, or you had to get reservations at every single place that sold food. Yeah. And even even the, places that don't do reservations normally. Yeah. And a lot of the places said uh, walk ins available. We still tried to walk in and they wouldn't let us. Wow. We ended up having to grab some like shitty seat in the back of a random bar. That's crazy. That's so fucking wild to sell so many tickets that you like ruin everyone's night. You ruined my birthday. Yeah. Well, I was probably a big contributor to that as well. Uh, <laughs> happy birthday. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's wild. So you went to the show. Yeah, I went on Friday what, night. Watching it on TikTok is because I saw all the clips and stuff. It looked way too big. Yeah. Like to, to enjoy as a punter. No. But yeah. You don't think so? I thought it was awesome because it uh, maybe it doesn't. Tr- it probably just doesn't translate at all on the phone. No, it doesn't. It, in the room, the stage is a screen, the MCG screens are screens, and then there's TVs, and then on stage yeah. is another screen on either side, so yeah. you can see like the camera point of view. Yeah. So you've got a great view no matter where you're sitting. That's awesome. And every single place you sit, you see something different. Where we are, we could see the stage light up and all the graphics, but on the ground, you can see the screen behind her. Yeah. It's it's a different experience wherever you're sitting, I think. Yeah, that's cool. That uh, it would be it would be sick to get tickets to all three events in yeah. in very different locations <laughs> if you had $100,000 to make sure that happened. Yeah, well, our How much were your tickets? Our tickets were only $69. Oh. We got the re-release tickets that came out like 3 days before the show. Oh, okay. And we were in the very very back of the MCG, but it was still pretty good seats. Cuz yeah. we could see the stage. It looked super well managed, like the way that they did the the seating, um, or or not the seating, but like the standing area in the middle was sectioned off, yeah. really well, and it looked like every, like it looked like all of her fans were actually following the rules as well, because it looks like they put them all in sections, and I was like, dude, there would be a few audiences that would just go, all right, we're not staying in a section. You know, there's a few types of, like, fans. Like, I don't know if Eminem's fans, if you put, like, I don't know, 4,000 of them in a section and we're like, all right, guys, stay here, and it was just, like, ropes. Yeah. I feel like people would just jump, you know, like, at music festivals and stuff like that. But it, it seemed like Taylor's fans were like, nah, let's follow the rules. Let's... Phoebe's going, which is cool. Phoebe's going again in Sydney with her friends. Yeah. And she's in where, like, H of the very, very, very front. Yeah. Or something like that. Yeah. So she's right at the very front on the floor. Yeah. And uh, how long was the show? Three hours and 15 minutes or something nuts. Dude, that's so fucking... The longest I've ever performed is an hour 40. And I was so fucking exhausted. No costume changes, no singing, no dancing, no running. Small stage, so I'm not like even walking. You know, her stage looked like 100 meters. Yeah. You know, of and even if you're just walking, it's fucking, she must be so fit to be able to pull that off. Um, I don't know. And I was thinking about, I've said it a few times, like, I don't understand. I don't understand why people can dislike her. I don't give a fuck. The private jet thing is the only thing that you really have on her. It's like, that's probably pretty gross. But also, if she was driving in traffic and people saw her, she would be killed. <laughs> you know, like... 
the the amount of unsafe driving that would happen around her if if like fans found out that she was just driving down a highway would be obscene, right? Mm. I understand that. Um, but like, I also don't understand how people can fucking love her. Is what I was saying is I don't understand the hate or the obscene love. I just, I'm just like, yeah, she has like a, a bunch of bangers. She's cool, but I don't understand how you can become incredibly attached to her. I've thought about it more. She, and I looked at like how much music she's released. It's fucking ridiculous. She's released way more music than just about anyone her age that's also like a pop star in her field um i think it's just like quantity of of music and it's all like very consistent she doesn't change too much or when she does change it happens super gradually the fans have a lot of notice so she's not doing this and then doing that it's just like it's just like a masterfully planned career with an obscene amount of consistency uh like no one I've ever seen ever. Like the Beatles maybe did that as well. But then, you know, someone got shot because they probably because they didn't take private jets enough. But the Beatles were also like the first people to ever do it properly. Mm. <clears throat> Sorry, mm. do music properly that's not Elvis. Mm. Do pop music is what I'm trying to say. And also it was four people, like the brains of four people plus the machine. Like obviously Taylor doesn't write everything herself, but everything is on her fucking shoulders. Like I think she's incredibly impressive uh so i guess it's just that of just like fucking being there all the time i mean i have people like that that have been listening to me do this podcast and all my videos and stuff since they were 15 and now they're fucking 25 you yeah um so like that's like a, a crazy impact that you can have on people's lives and like such a powerful connection but i don't do mainstream appeal stuff so if you can do that to a much wider group and type of people for how long has she even been doing it? it's longer than 10 years 2008 right or 2006 fuck yeah that's crazy i think she i think she I was, was like, like 17 when she started maybe yeah i think i was eight or nine when love story came out yeah which was her first big hit yeah and then also just just the whole story that she's been able to construct and obviously a lot of it's true but it's also definitely a fucking movie of like oh they sold my rights but that's okay we're fighting back and we're gonna come back stronger and releasing all this kind of stuff you know it's uh really interesting to see how she's managed to do that and uh yeah, I don't know. What the fuck do you do after this? I just see that and I go, that's so impressive. That would be fucking hell to live and exist in. But the money. Yeah, but... It's the first tour, like solo tour ever to gross over a billion dollars. Yeah, but what are you going to do with that? Like, that's, the, that's yeah. the thing. It's like, I don't understand the appeal of being a billionaire at all. Like... Unless you want to use that money to change the world, you know, then fuck yeah. I don't know. I just feel like it's not so much the money, it's the fame. I, I could not deal with being that fucking famous yeah. where every where it's unsafe for you to do any activity anywhere in the world. Like she can't go anywhere without like five guys with guns. You know? Yeah, like a, a that would do my fucking head in. Carl and Jackie O posted a video yesterday of her leaving a hotel to go to a <coughs> restaurant and there's yeah. like 50 people taking photos of her as she's getting into the car. I think I would have a fucking meltdown. I don't know how she I don't know how she has the mental fortitude to deal with that much attention in real life. People talking shit online whatever. Like I've I've got that where everyone's always looking at me online, but like if I if every time I went anywhere there's people screaming and crying and asking me for this and saying I love you, I would punch one of them just to make it go away. You know, that'd be great. I, you know, that I that would convert me to a Swifty if just one day she just fucking punched one. You know how the artists hide out in little boxes that get rolled onto stage yeah. before the show? When her box got rolled out backstage, yeah. um, we could see it from where we were and the whole fucking crowd started cheering when the box came out. Oh, people are going crazy for Taylor's box? Yeah. <laughs> that is a really funny one of like yeah like you're being that famous that even the precautions that you take to, to stay safe and hidden everyone knows about 
And everyone's still, look, she's trying to hide from us. <laughs> yeah. And it also made me laugh. She's got like 20 dancers that dance during the show. They all started quietly walking out backstage and you could just see them backstage. Yeah. And the same thing, the crowd just started cheering. And yeah. It made me laugh a lot because they were all of these, all obviously so excited that they were getting cheered for. Yeah. Imagine I walk out to do, to do my job and a thousand people go, yeah. That, yeah, that happens. The most you'll get is like if I'm doing a, a hundred seater, there'll be, and you, you walk on stage to adjust the camera, you let three people go, kill it. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. And that's unacceptable. I want better than that. The next time I'm doing a show and Keelan comes on stage to adjust the cameras, no, standing ovation. Don't encourage it. Perceive the fuck out of him. <laughs> don't encourage it. No, I think that's a really good, that's a really good one. Is is before the show even starts, just like you're checking the cameras, right? Are they good to go? Yeah. <laughs> that's a really good one. Or maybe or maybe like 20 minutes before the show starts, there's only 30% of the audience even seated. When you go up to do the cameras, I'm on the backstage microphone. Welcome to the stage, Keelan, to check that the cameras are still working. Woo! Play music. Oh, I think I'd kill myself. <laughs> I, already, I already hate it enough when people go, woo, as I walk on to do the cameras. That's really good. Well, uh, I can't unsay that because uh, we don't have time to edit it out, unfortunately. But did um, you see the car parking thing, all the Americans? Yes. So I actually... the. In the same way, so basically, all of these aerial shots of uh, the st what was the stadium MCG? MCG, yeah. All the aerial shots of the MCG came out of like you know the Taylor fans being there, and there were heaps of comments from Americans going, "Hundred thousand people, where are the parking spots? Like, where's the car park?" And they were being their their minds were being blown of like, "How the fuck did people even get to this venue? Where are all of the parking spaces?" Uh, and uh, every all Australians are like, what do you mean? How do you get to the MCG? We took the train. And they're like, what? And then Australians are like, what? And then I just saw today like uh, a response to people freaking out that showed a bunch of aerial shots of um, American stadiums. And like uh, an American stadium that had 100,000 capacity, so this basically the same as the MCG, had... Uh, Something like twenty four thousand car parks. Whoa. Isn't that fucking crazy? And then there are a bunch of comments of like Americans talking about how it takes sometimes it can take an hour to get from your car park into the venue. Whereas, like from where I am, Frankston, if I want to get to the MCG, it will take me like maybe an two hours max from my home on public transport and then to walk in there. Probably even less. Probably an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, an hour thirty. Yeah. Yeah. To to get there. It's like you from where the MCG is, you get off the train and then you walk for ten minutes and then you're inside. And then <laughs> the security's so lax. They don't yeah. have metal to well they have metal detectors, but you don't like it's not like airport security. Mm. It's not like security when you go to an American stadium. Yeah, very different. Yeah. Yeah. So just seeing like the aerial shots of the American ones is fucking mind blowing because they also don't do multi-level car parks because they're expensive. Like in Australia, all of our big car parks that have thousands of cars in them, they're multi-level. Whereas in America, instead of building up, they just build out and the fucking, it looks like the MC, the, the stadiums have been flooded by concrete and it's completely surrounded by like literally tens of thousands of car parks. It's fucking crazy that you would want to live like that where, because it's not like we can't drive. Like you can drive to the MCG easy, super easy. You have the option. It's, it's expensive, but it's more convenient for people. You just fucking park it somewhere in a car park and then you walk 10 minutes. Yeah, I parked at Mike's place and he lives across the road. Should we tell everyone the address? Yeah, yeah, we'll put that in uh, in Patreon. No, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's so funny watching American people like defend the parking situation because I've been to America and New York was awesome. No cars, and I use taxis a lot, so you can use cars, but it's a lot easier and more interesting to walk. But then I was in LA, bro. Literally, it was like it seemed minimum forty minutes to do one thing. And, and it's not like 
if I wanted to do my shopping for the week and then see a movie or get some food with friends, I can't do that in one place. It seemed. It was like 40 minute drive, do my shopping, 40 minute drive, come home. 40 minute drive, go to the movies, 40 minute drive, come home. 40 minute drive, go out to dinner, 40 minute drive, come home. And it's like nothing is centralized like that uh, in the way that like a walkable city is everywhere in Australia or like New York. I'm sure there are some in America, but it's it's wild how reliant their entire system is on cars. Um, and that that's like a, a whole other thing of like, fuck, the amount of death on the roads must be crazy high just from everyone having to drive fucking everywhere all the time. And the amount of traffic that just gets worse and worse and worse. And instead of building a good train line, they just add another lane to their highway and it doesn't work or it works for like eight months and then people have more babies and those babies can drive. And that's why uh, it always it always confused me. Like, why can 16-year-olds in America drive? And it's like, because they have to. You know, like the, in the only places in Australia where you can drive when you're 16 is like very remote places or... Uh, Northern Territory, I th- I think, like there's like more more remote places where we don't really have public transport. There's a smaller population. You can drive when you're 16 because you have to. But in America, it's like you have to drive everywhere, all across the country, other than like New York and I don't know, maybe San Francisco. I haven't been there. Although you probably don't want to be on the streets there anymore. <laughs> Looking at some of the videos you see, <laughs> well, that only applies when it, when it goes dark. Yeah, yeah, in the daytime, yeah. But yeah, it's it's just it's really interesting watching everyone's minds be fucking blown at like what? There's not a twenty four thousand space car park yeah. surrounding the. I mean, out what's around our MCG? Another stadium and another stadium. Just stadiums. And then a park. And then Mike's place. And then Mike's exact <laughs> address, which is on Patreon. Um, and then there's like a there's there is a big road. Yeah. Uh. Is, is it, and then next to that is the city. It's a street of it's a street of stadiums, a city, and then residential. Yeah. Whereas from what I was reading, US stadiums, a lot of them are like really far away from the city. So it's like the only thing there is stadium, car park. That's it. Yeah. Crazy. Imagine the fucking traffic. How do you get out of a twenty four thousand space car park? <laughs> Imagine the amount of fucking road rage fights that get out of the way. Fuck you. We I went to a driving your fucking cyber truck there my, with my friend's uncle when I was in America the other year. Yeah, we went to a Washington baseball game like in DC, mm. and parking was a nightmare. He spent like 150 US on parking, which I thought was outrageous. And then we had to leave it. I don't know baseball terms, but like three quarter time essentially, so yeah. that we could beat the traffic. And we rushed back to the car to get the car out of the car park. Yeah. On the road. Yeah, fuck that. Every every big game I went to in America, that has happened. We've left early to beat the traffic. Wow. Whereas usually when I go to a game, I stick around for a bit to... You stick around to the end unless your team is really losing. Yeah. And then you're like, ah, this hurts my soul to continue watching. And I might wait 10 minutes to wait for the, tra- the foot traffic to die down. Yeah. You know, I saw a fucking hilarious... Speaking of waiting, uh, the, the out of all of the TikToks I saw about the Taylor Swift in Melbourne, this was the best one. It was uh, a dude who had obviously, obviously brought his little girls to the show just filming himself in the men's toilet, <laughs> completely empty. Yeah. <laughs> just he was there in the urinal. And it's like, you know, it's the, it's the toilet of the MCG, the biggest stadium in the country. And it's like... It's as big as my fucking house. And he's the only person in there. And he filmed himself walking past the line into the women's bathroom. Bro, if I was a woman, I'm just going to use the men's. Yeah, women were using the men's. Yeah. Yeah. They should have just, for the Taylor Swift, I feel like for the, for like the Taylor Swift concert and uh, the UFC, all the toilets are gender neutral. Because at the UFC, there's only fellas. And then at Taylor Swift, there's only women. So just fuck it. Everyone can use whatever they want. Get the women pissing in the troughs at the MCG. Let them let them go ham in their sequence. Why not? Um, so you are not the biggest Taylor Swift fan, but you enjoyed it. I loved it. It was the best concert I've ever been to. Really? The Paul- why? Why is it better than than bands you are a bigger fan of? 
because uh, the the production was just so crazy. The stage was like an LED TV. Yeah, and it was like completely synced, synchronized for whenever. Like in some songs, she'd take a step, and the glass would the screen would crack under her feet. That's cool. And then there was a si- fuck. The, see, that's why whenever I see a musician, especially pop musician, especially especially a solo where everyone's looking at just you. That's when I th- I go, my job is so fucking easy. Yeah. If I had to like remember all the words of my joke and I have to say them on time to a beat while blocking out the noise of the crowd, listening in my earpiece, all I can hear is tick, 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 four, tick, 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 four. That's all I can hear. And then I have to s- synchronize my fucking footsteps to the LED screen on the floor. And the, even like her backup dancers, this one song, where they're on bikes for some reason. And it's like... <laughs> See, that's so funny. Bikes for some reason. There's not a single situation where I would be like, I need a bike for this joke. Yeah. And there's four people riding around on the stage, but under the wheels, is it lighting up as they ride? Wow. Past? And you can tell that it's not like... No, it's not, pre- it's not pressure sensitive. You can't do that. Because it's so slightly off, but it's still just... Very, very impressive. There's, it's so much. The production of it was fucking crazy. And anyone who's going, but I don't like Taylor Swift, you'd like it just because of the production value. Yeah. And yeah. also she goes for three and a half hours. It's fucking awesome. That's crazy. Paul McCartney went for- I really, really feel sorry for some of the fat Swifties. Three and a half hours on your feet. That's got to be the, the biggest workout some of these chicks have ever had in their <laughs> life. Yeah. And they're wearing itchy sequins for the whole time. <laughs> you know, those Swifties will be turning to sweaties in <laughs> 10 minutes. <laughs> Can I sit down? We saw Paul McCartney last year. Yeah. And he went for a very long time. Mm. But his encore came and I was like, all right, mate, you should have rapped before the encore. <laughs> this has actually left me with a tainted perspective of what the show was because the encore went on for way too long. Yeah. But her show was great. There was about 45 minutes of slow, um, but that was pretty good. Yeah. Anyway. No, that's cool. I think she'd be awesome to see. She, I just didn't even try to get tickets because I assumed that they would be like 150, 200 bucks. But $69 is a great price and a funny number. Yeah, my brother in law just bought four tickets last yeah. second and we just got to go. That's sick. Um, all right. Anyway, I think I'm converted to a Swifty just from your, just from experiencing it secondhand. And there were like, fireworks and there was. Um, It'd be sick. Fire and stuff. It was awesome. It was it was so cool, and also that it was filmed like a concert special, like a live concert DVD. Yeah, cool. Because I was we talked about this last episode where I was wondering if she would bring all of her equipment and stuff, or if that would just be too cost prohibitive. No, she must have put that shit on a fucking boat, man. That's what I thought, but I don't. I I was trying to work out the logistics. That would be expensive. I have no idea. Maybe but, she put it on one of her other planes. Yeah, probably. Uh, the, the, it was filmed like a movie. That's sick. And there's moments where she's like, you know, looking to the left and then for like a punchline of a song or I don't know yeah. what they call it. Yeah. She like turns her head and looks directly down the barrel of a camera. So it's, She's so she's, fucking talented. Like that's re- just remembering. I couldn't remember that shit. Even if I even if I had the ability to do all the dance moves and all the steps and all the songs, which I don't, I wouldn't also have the ability to remember, all right, at this second I have to look left because there's going to be a camera there yeah. that will be in a different position at every show. And I spent the whole show looking for these cameras, couldn't see them. Not that I... Yeah, I so can she, tell, but yeah. she can't see them either. She just got a vague idea of where they might be. <laughs> Fucking crazy. It was awesome. I wonder if you're taking cameramen around with you then, because camera equipment. Maybe not. Maybe not cameramen, but the directors and the camera. Uh, yeah, you know, like supervisors. Yeah, I don't know. That's uh, yeah. Maybe the live switches or whatever, or like there's a guy going, "Camera B, get in position now! What are you doing, Demo?" It actually probably would be better for her just to fly with her whole crew, mm. so that it's perfect every single show. Rather than training local people. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's like, yeah, if your tour is grossing a billion dollars. Like, think about businesses that, how much money businesses have to spend to gross a billion dollars. It probably doesn't touch, uh, probably doesn't come anywhere near, like, Taylor would have had to spend way less money to make a billion. 
I feel, than like a billion dollar business does. I might be making that up. How much, I was thinking this. How much money do you think she would have as a guarantee per show? She'd have it'd have to be more than a million guarantee a show. Well, I know won't say names, but I know how much money a few like comedians get for doing these arena shows. Yeah, here that are way smaller, and it's oh, that's a million. Yeah, well, that's that's you yeah. know, so like for fucking doing the the M, I mean the MCG three times in a row. But then there's like at least a thousand. Oh, okay, that's a massive exaggeration. At least 500 crew involved in the actual production. And then I couldn't imagine how many staff. Yeah, like uh, there's no way that Taylor, as much money as she has, could bankroll her own tour. Like that's something that would probably... That reminds me of the the guy that I knew that, that would ensure crew, uh, uh, shipping tanker ships. That's right. Where y- it, you couldn't insure it with one company because if the ship sunk, the company would go under because they couldn't afford to replace it. So you would insure 10% of it. So I reckon that's got to be how you'd fund the, the Taylor Swift tour is you would get three of the biggest right. touring companies in the world yeah. and they would fund 20% of the Taylor's tour and they would get 20% of the profit or whatever. The merch is actually pretty good as well. You know how you yeah. some shows in the merch is really like like this, like just shitty quality. Qu- oh thing. man, the Dave Chappelle merchandise was atrocious i was i really really wanted to buy something and i got to i got there and I, and it looked like it was printed on paper and it was like fucking 80 dollars a t-shirt and i was just like man no well yeah this is an american shirt i got in america yeah of like a local beach and uh i've worn it like six times and it's already got holes in it yeah yeah american merch is horrific they really they really just be like ripping people off but hers was good this was great that's well look i'm a swifty I'm a Swifty and I've never seen any Swift Head Sundays. We're a Swift Head. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> anyway, probably moving on to something that uh, people listening to the show might give a fuck about. <laughs> Shane Gillis is on SNL this Saturday or American Saturday, which is like our Sunday. I can't wait to watch it. You know what's really funny? They're doing all of those promos um, where they, you know, they're doing like, they do like little promo sketches with the celebrity guests that are coming up. And, um, Shane's just pretending to be unfunny on them, which I think is just like, I was thinking about it like, man, I can't give away my act and I probably can't do what I actually think is funny because they wouldn't allow it. So I just have to like be unfunny. And the joke is, oh yeah, but he's actually quite good. It just looks, just those environments just look so restrictive to comedy. Um, I wonder what he'll do. Because I know that uh, Norm MacDonald, I actually tried to put a clip of this in my video where I talked about Shane Gillis, but it got claimed by SNL, so I had to edit it out. Norm MacDonald got fired from SNL for being unfunny. Uh, And uh, then uh, about eight months later, he did the monologue. They invited him back. And he basically, he said something along the lines of uh, either, it's it's impossible for someone to get funny in eight months. That's not possible. So either uh, I got funnier, which isn't possible, or... The show stinks. <laughs> and it was not in the script that they were given because it's live, right? And you have to give them a script of what you're going to say and you have to do rehearsal. So rehearsal with the camera crew and the director and everything, you're doing your monologue. So Norm MacDonald must have done his monologue and then switched it up on the on the live event where he basically just goes, so the, the, he, goes, the he goes, the bad news is I'm not funny. The good news is the show blows. It's so fucking good. And then he goes, all right, we've got a terrible show for you this Saturday. We've got this person, this person, this person. And just like trash the show. I wonder what Shane Gillis will do. I can't wait to see it. Because obviously he'll do like a funny few minutes, but surely he's also going to address getting fired and everything. And I wonder if he'll do that in a way that they... uh, I wonder if they'll... if. Or I wonder if he will do what they think he's going to do or if he has ulterior motives, which I'm I'm a big fan of going on things and switching it up. Um, but yeah, I think we'll, we'll end it there. 
Um, if you want to send an email to the show, send it through the podcast at loosebeers.com. If you want some life advice, if you have any questions, we'd love to get an email. We haven't gotten any for a while. I don't know what's going on. You guys don't use emails. It's weird. The show's never been bigger and I've never gotten less emails. A lot of you guys, I guess, stop being 15 years old. <laughs> I have a crush on a girl. But send it through to podcast at loosebeers.com. Uh, I would love to hear from, from you and uh, I would love to read out whatever you have uh, for us on the show. Anyway, we're going to continue on Patreon. Uh, I hope you have a shit one. Bye.